Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tiffany Benson, one part of Team Benson, and today is the last day of Vlonica. And it is also Sunday. <laughs> so that means a garden tour day. <laughs> it's been a long day, guys. All right guys, so, so we are actually going to try and get this whole garden tour in before the sun completely goes down. Our sun is setting earlier and earlier and earlier. It's actually only about like 4.45 right now and it's already starting to set, which is a little insane. <laughs> but if you guys have not subscribed already to my channel, please make sure that you subscribe. We are doing a 10K giveaway that we are partnering with um, or sponsored by Mighty Crop. They'll be giving a uh, Mighty Crop system to our winner and then we have a seed case organizer plus a $50 gift card so that you can get your garden going. So before we lose sun, let's go get into this garden tour. All right guys, we are gonna start in the very back, which is this area <laughs> because this area is losing sun first. So let's crawl in here and see what we got. All right guys, let's start with underneath the roselle. Look at all of this bok choy. I need to come in here and eat some of this because we have some giant leaves in here. So this is the bok choy and then we have Brussels sprouts right behind it. And then this is the big root of the roselle. And then moving on up here, this is one of my favorite little spots in my garden just because it, it grows very, it's just growing really pretty and it's so tasty. So we have some buttercrunch lettuce there and then we also have the uh, red bull salad lettuce and then we have one bok choy here. We have greens right in the middle and then we also have some green onions, some bunching onions right there. And then right up above we have some snapdragons. Guys there's something about this little area that just brings me like so much joy. I like get myself on up in here <laughs> and just sit and just look at it and it has not gotten attacked really by any type of bug or anything and it's grown so full like so nice and full it's getting like the perfect amount of sun but almost dappled from the roselle so it's just turning out to be a really beautiful space and then over here we have a little stevia in the pot right below the big loofah we have garlic and then we have a giant loofah, guys, that is now fully covering three arches. This one, this one, and then the one way over there that I'll show you guys. But it is huge. And look at all of these just loofahs that are on it. So all of these big ones are the loofahs that we are saving to dehydrate, to, um, to let dry out in order to make dish, um, dish scrubs and then the other loofahs that are coming in we are actually eating so guys loofah actually doesn't taste that bad <laughs> it actually just tastes like a squash it has a bit of a, a different smell to it that once you cook it, it you can't smell it like while you're eating it but when you're cutting it up in your hands you're just like I don't know if that's gonna be yummy but turns out it's really really good now below here we have our sugar our organ sugar pod peas that are finally starting to really climb. We have our parsley, we have lots of radishes in between here that I need to come out and pick because they are starting to get done. And then we have our broccoli, which is finally starting to get a lot bigger. Now moving along here guys, we have a ginormous banana pepper that is producing a lot. Like this is the most my banana pepper has ever produced in my garden. And then we have a red bell pepper right here. And then in the very back, if you guys can see back here, we have a yellow bell pepper. So my peppers are doing really, really good this year. And then we have some bush beans in here. We have purple bush beans and we have green bush beans and just all different types. I think there's even a dragon tongue in here too as well. I just picked some so there's not a lot of beans there but then we also have the rattlesnake pole bean 
right here. And aren't those gorgeous guys? These are some of the most beautiful beans and they taste really great too. They're not like stringy or anything like that. So it's a really good bean if you guys want to try it. All right guys, so here's the amazing thing about the rattlesnake whole bean. That one is one that does better in the hot climate. So if you're in a hot desert climate, the rattlesnake pole bean is going to do a lot better for you. And you can actually put that in the ground during the monsoon. I got mine in probably about a month later than what I would want to, but I put it in, you can put it in during the monsoon and the monsoon rains is actually enough to water it and keep it growing while you're waiting for, you know, it to really, really cool down. So as long as you have it a little bit protected, protect it over, put like an Armenian cucumber or something like that over it, and you won't have an issue with growing that rattlesnake pole bean in a hot climate. And then also we have the broccoli, we have another Brussels sprout, a tomato <laughs> that just wants to do its own thing. And then up here we have a chamomile that looks like I forgot to water it, so I'll have to go back and do that. And then we have radishes back up in there. And then also down here, we have some celery. Now this is one pull of my Malabar spinach. This one doesn't get as full as the other one, but it still got pretty full. We have eaten this one more than we have the other one, but this one is starting to get these little berries on it, which are the seeds. So I'm excited so that when we do our seed swap, guys, these are gonna be in everybody's packages too because I think that they're gorgeous and they're great to grow in the desert. Now on this side of the patio arch where the big roselle is, we have some um, celery and then also down in here, if you guys can see, we have some more radishes and then we have some more sugar pod peas that are growing on this side of the arch. And then coming out of the jungle, we have the Malabar. This one is my one that's really, really full. Cool. It got to the point to where you cannot see the pole and that is what my goals were. So I am very excited about that one. It is starting to seed a little bit too, but not as much as the other one. And then guys, we still have the big giant roselle. It's now easier to walk around because the stems are a little bit up since they are not weighed down with fruit. I did leave a little bit of fruit on here for the bees and just to dry out. It's fine if it dries out on there. I'm gonna dry out the leaves or it can just dry out naturally on the plant but at least it'll give the bees something that, I don't know what it is they like about that thing because it seems like one hard cal calyx, but they love it. And then we have some more radishes. Someone said I should call this the radish pit, radish pit, if I could say that. And I think that's what we're gonna call it because they're gonna start planting some more in here. This side is already harvested and this side looks like it's starting to get ready to be done. So we'll be planting more of those two as well. And then we have the nasturtium that is looking beautiful and then some romaine lettuce right in front of it. All right guys, everyone is rushing home, which means there's motorcycles all down my street. <laughs> but we have a tomato jungle mess that I'm gonna show you guys. It's like a mixture of my black cherry tomato and my loofah and the uh, another batch of rattlesnake Whole beans. So here it is. I thought that things would die off in a more timely matter like the beans and the uh, loofah, but they did not. Well, pretty much just the loofah. So uh, like we just have new ones coming in everywhere. So we have the black cherry tomato, which is produced, starting to produce a lot of tomatoes. And a lot of the leaves are like all wonky because they're all trying to like, they're twisted, trying to grow up. But we have black cherry tomatoes everywhere. And as you can see, it's up on this side of the arch and up on this side of the arch, which is what I wanted. But we also have this big old loofah vine that is just growing right through it, guys. And look, it ends right here. And then over here, we have our little grape tomatoes that are just doing their own thing, but they are starting to grow way past the arch or the uh, trellis. So they're starting to come along on this arch too as well. So it's gonna be like a surprise on which one is growing. Like if it's gonna be the black cherry tomatoes or is it gonna be the grape tomatoes or a loofah? You never know. You just gotta wait and see what happens. 
Now the important thing to keep all of this really healthy and not have any blight or anything like that is to make sure that it gets a lot of air to where the plant can dry and it's not just holding water on it. So that was one of the reasons why I wanted to grow it up an arch. One, because it would have been easy, it's easier to wrap a tarp around it when it gets too cold. And two, it has, it has so much airflow, guys. Like this is the entire thing just gets direct airflow which is gonna keep the plant really, really healthy. And below this mass of tomato-ness is a big giant thing of basil that I have still yet to come in and harvest, guys. It's gonna happen, it's on the list. And then I have some marigolds right below that. And then over here, I have the eggplants. I have an eggplant here, eggplant here, and it is still producing eggplants. You can see there's one there. And then the shishito peppers are really starting to take off. They're really, really starting to do well, and I have tons there, and then I also have a ton there. Ooh, look, a little baby red one. Okay, guys, normally a shishito pepper that's little like this is not supposed to be <laughs> red, but this one's red. And what I have found is that when you get red shishito peppers, they are super sweet. So we're going to try it. Yep, still a thing. So shishito peppers are called lottery peppers. And they're called lottery peppers for one or two reasons. One, because I mean, they grow a lot so you feel like you hit the lottery. And two, it is an actual lottery if it's going to be spicy or not. <laughs> but in the winter, the beautiful part about growing your shishito peppers in the winter in a desert is that when they turn red, they turn super sweet and they are the best ones. They are like the little golden ones that we fight over, but I got that one. And then we have a big thing of carrots that I really should have been, and I'm really gonna probably regret that. We have a cabbage right there, and then tons more jalapenos, guys. I have picked so many jalapenos off of here that the it's just it's crazy how many jalapenos produced on this plant. And I mean, they're even all the way down here, guys. There's just a ton more that I still need to come on and harvest. And then we have a spearmint that's looking a little rough. We have lemon thyme on the wall. We also have a stevia, another lemon thyme, and another lemon thyme, or rosemary, and then another lemon thyme. Lemon thyme up there, and then snapdragons. And then right below here, we have some purple potted beans. So those are also snow peas. And then in the brassica bed, we have cabbage, 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 and cabbage. We have some celery right in the middle. We have a lettuce right here on this side, and also a lettuce right there. And then we have radishes, just kind of sprinkled throughout. And then we have collard greens on each side of the celery. And then look at these radishes guys these are huge I need to come in and pick all of these tomorrow now i keep saying that i'm going to i'm going to pull these okra guys because this, especially this red one it's so infected but i i keep getting okra i have one here i have another one there i have one here and then i have all of these babies that are flowering the same thing with the green okra all of them are starting to flower all the leaves fell off of the red onto this green one and now this one has spider mites. <laughs> and then I finally started to get some orange hat tomatoes, which is really cool. Ooh, I think I have one that is, you know what, I'll save it for tomorrow. But I've got one that I think it might be ready. And then we have celery and then more orange hat tomatoes and then celery right below that. And then, yep, you guessed it, more okra. <laughs> more and more okra and then another bush tomato plant that this one is on my mighty crop and it's doing so well this is another way of being able to keep your um, tomatoes nice and healthy so it is so nice to grow tomatoes during the fall slash like winter time in the desert because they do really really well and you will not battle hornworms you won't have any hornworm damage you won't even see a hornworm all the way up until like maybe the summertime all right guys our herb bed is one of almost to the last i think we're gonna make it before the sun sets but we have some sage we have some sweet marjoram some parsley here and here curly parsley is my favorite 
And then we also have some, a big thing of oregano that is just spreading out massively. And then we have some regular thyme back there, the um, Thai basil, and then if you can see behind the Thai basil, those things back there is a uh, bunching onions. We have bunching onions there, cilantro right there, and then this is a sweet Marconi red pepper, which is starting to get some peppers on it. How exciting is that, guys? And then we have some more orange hat tomatoes in the Dollar Tree pots. And then this is our lettuce celery um, pot section. <laughs> so we just have some celery at the top with some romaine lettuce and then some romaine, romaine lettuce there and some red romaine. One little pot of romaine. And then this is going to be the spinach tower. We have spinach here and then there's gonna be more spinach at the bottom. And then I think I'm gonna make that one a big spinach tower too as well. And then look at this guys. The lime tree has little baby limes on it. So hopefully those turn into something. I am really hoping for limes this year because we did not get any last year. The first year we got a whole bunch of limes. And then, I don't know, I think I overwatered so that then it just went through the ringer <laughs> and it was not a great look for the poor lime tree. But now it's starting to do better, we're doing good, and it's starting to produce little limes. But what's not doing good is the mulberry. You just have to keep the faith, but the mulberry just looks like rough sticks. <laughs> and then over here, guys, we have the uh, lemon balm, which is taken over completely. And then we have some bush beans on, or on each side of some thyme. And the bush beans are starting to look a little rough for the rare, <laughs> the, the wear, but they do have a couple of like little beans on them. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. This was just more so to provide nitrogen for these two pots because they don't get a break and the stuff that grows in here grows back every year so it just it kind of was to help them along you can give your pot some nitrogen at the same time as being able to grow things that keep growing then you might as well do that and get some you know a couple green beans in there which makes it even better but the sun guys is going down i'm starting to lose like good light so i will uh head into the house to show you guys my last menorah lighting. I'm so sad that I'm gonna have to wait another year for Hanukkah because it's one of my favorite holidays. But until next time, grow yourselves a garden because even a small space can provide you with tons of food. Bye guys!